Before I begin this video, there's probably a couple of things that I should mention. Uh, number one is that this video assumes that you have some degree of familiarity with the HIT style training of Mike Mincer, the bodybuilder, uh, Dorian Yates, and other similar style. Mike Mincer referred to the style of training as a heavy duty training. Um, it's high intensity, low volume training. And um, so, yeah, you should definitely probably, I, I, some of the, if you're not familiar with it, some of the references, a lot of the things that I discuss in it may not make a lot of sense of, to you. This is a review of my experience with using this style of training. And um, yeah, so I will roll the video in just a moment. But if you have not heard of it before, I will post a, um, a video of some of the fundamental aspects of it, the most key, most important parts of it that Mike Mincer himself describes in the, in the video. And, um, and it's, it's probably a long video. It's about 45 minutes to 50, I think minutes or so. And, you know, but, but it, it breaks down exactly what I'm reviewing and what I'm talking about in this. So I'll assume that most of you probably clicking on this video have heard of it before. And if you've not, then that would probably be something good to check out um, before or after you, you watch this video. So you guys take it easy and I'll roll the video at this time. What up guys, Justin Morgan here. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some reasons why I think high intensity training may be a very, very good way to train and to answer some of the questions from critics that I, I think are, are false about it. So I'm um, just randomly off the top of my head. These are things that I see come up in uh, comment sections and things. And uh, so my, my training history uh, with regard to high intensity training is that I began doing it about 10 months ago. Um, this was after training for about uh, I mean, off and on, like about eight or nine years um, consistently. Of course, I'm 40 years old now, and I did a little bit of training in high school, you know, just messing around with the weights. Um, in my 20s, I would go to the gym periodically and like, get started on something. But it wasn't until I was in my 30s or about 30 years old that I started really training hard um, for the purpose of growing more muscle from competing in strength athletics, um, including weightlifting powerlifting and strongman competition, weightlifting and uh, strongman competition kind of being standout for things that I enjoyed, um, but powerlifting being a kind of a base of where I developed a lot of strength at. Um, those training for those sports actually involved a lot of similar concepts to high intensity training that involved uh, relying heavily on uh, a very small amount of sets taken to a very high intensity over periods of time, mixed with going back and forth with other higher volume training. So if someone looked at me and criticized me saying, well, you, uh, you know, were able to build a certain level of muscle mass and a certain level of uh, athletic prowess based on higher volumes, and then you used um, higher intensity methods to actualize or to um, develop um, specificity in sports with higher high intensity training principles, then you would be right. I actually did do that. And I, I think that is a very viable method. But um, so for the purpose of just muscle growth, uh, or, or the improvement in body composition, I think that high intensity may provide a lot of good resources for some people. But I want to talk about why that may change over the career of a lifter why I disagree with uh, some of the criticisms and uh, just things like that. So a lot of this is off the top of my head. Uh, maybe you have questions that you have in the comment section below. I may start posting to this channel again if uh, people do have questions about this. But otherwise, uh, one of the criticisms that I see is that the high intensity training uh, method or um, heavy duty training, as Mike Mincer called it, uh, would usually revolves around certain key figures. Now, I have found quite a number of people that utilize high intensity training uh, in different capacities uh, over different times. And some of those people include, uh, you know, the, the big names, like people always say Mike Mincer and Dorian Yates, and then they kind of pretend like those are the only people, but that's not true. Um, Chad Shaw is a guy that was really active on the bodybuilding.com forums back in the day, up until about 2011, I think it was the last time that he posted. And uh, he goes by the moniker on bodybuilding.com, the natural one. Uh, he's really into talking about natural bodybuilding or drug-free bodybuilding. Uh, but his name in real life, is, or his name outside of the internet is actually Chad Shaw. So uh, he's somebody that uh, you, know, you could look up to or, or look, look up and kind of see where he goes with it. Very similar, um, mentions Mike Mincer a lot. 
um, seems to have heavily utilized his his um, training principles later in his bodybuilding career at least maybe he did it all the way through I don't know um, so another one that seems to have started out with it and actually won mr. America is um, uh, he said always says from my heart to you is it John I think it's John Hart um, uh, mr. natural uh, mr. Uni uh, Uni mr. universe mr. natural universe uh, John Hart uh, Mr. American Heart, I think is what he calls his YouTube channel. So does a lot of videos on that kind of thing. I think he was directly um, studied with um, Mike Mincer and was trained by him. So, you know, he's a good one. Um, so I'm just trying to mention like people that aren't normally brought up. Um, Elliot Hoss has recently uh, talked about um, this style of training along with Jay Vincent who seems to have used it heavily throughout most of his uh, lifting career um, so Elliot Hoss if you look up the Elliot Hoss along with high intensity training and one set to failure he was talking about this style of training back 10 12 years ago so he's not new to it but uh, he's recently kind of had a re um, re renewed interest in using it as a training concept and then so those are other people so when people say like oh this is only a few people have ever seen any benefit on this that's not true there's quite a number of people who have exceptional results on it and some training methods and principles rely heavily on it like the louisiana state university um training uh program relies on something kind of similar not exactly it's not one set uh, but they do one heavy set to um, you know all out max or um, a max set of 10 5 3 i think they do like 10s for four weeks uh, fives for four weeks and then threes for four weeks but it's a weightlifting program so the, the goal is to improve your snatch and your clean and jerk not um, specifically to build more muscle but they're utilizing similar concepts with that but then they also do back off sets so that's not strictly one set to failure um, some of the things people will say about it is that oh well it's not really one set to failure because like Dorian Yates um, he did like um, the ramping set so he starts out he, do, he does several sets to get up to his top set like it's not only one set I think most people who have intelligently looked at this in any way um, realize that it's not only one set you're doing warm-up sets to get up there like if you squat say i mean something really big my best squat ever is not enormous but it's uh you know i did um, i was using kilo plates so i think it came out to around 408 pounds but basically 405 i squatted 405 for eight reps that was uh you know the best that i've done so far so not remarkable but you know not poor either um, and and that, I think that is on video on this channel, by the way. Um, but, you know, like I did warm up sets to get up there. So I, I, you know, I probably started with the bar, then did 135 for a few reps, 225 for a few reps, 315 for several reps, then maybe 365 for a rep or two, and then I did 405 for eight reps. Um, so, you know, I think most people assume that once you get that strong in your lifts that you're probably gonna take a number of warm-up sets. So I don't know that that's a legitimate criticism or people are just trolling with that stuff because it seems pretty idiotic to bring up as a criticism. But, you know, maybe, um, maybe they think that that's what's trying to be perpetuated and they don't really look into it very closely and then they come up with silly arguments like that. So that's possible. Um, one thing that I see people bring up is Mike Mincer himself, that he built his physique off of normal bodybuilding training and then switched to that style of training. Um, I also don't agree that that's true because I know that um, if you go back and look at Mike Mincer's biography, he was born in 1951. He began high intensity training in 1971 when he met Arthur Jones. So he was approximately 20 years old and I think it's about another 10 years or so before he wins the Mr. Um, the Mr. Olympia that he's known for uh, because he's one of the only people ever to have like a perfect score on the, the Mr. Olympia competition. So, um, you know, when people say like, oh, he built it first with this, he was only 20 years old and it was 10 years later that he won the Mr. Olympia. So, you know, I, I, I don't think they must not have looked up his biography because that's immediately what I did. When somebody, I heard somebody make this criticism, I thought maybe they're right. So I went and looked up how old was he when he went his first Olympia. Okay, that's, you know, approximately getting close to 1980, I think. I, I don't remember what year. 
Okay, so I just went and looked up the exact dates so that I kind of had some familiarity with it. Um, the, it looked like in like 1973, 1974, 1975, he was placing anywhere from 10th up through 5th in the Mr. Olympia competitions. This is after beginning the high intensity training, what he would eventually call heavy duty training based on the Arthur Jones, um, old Nautilus style of training. Um, but it, then it is like 19, I think it's 1978 before he be, wins his actual first um, natural or not natural, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Olympia, Mr. America, I think. I don't remember. I don't remember the names of all these competitions, but he's the only person to win it with a perfect score. Um, so the criticism that like Mike Mincer only um, built his physique after uh, that he built his physique on conventional high volume training and then switched to the one set to failure heavy duty training that um, he became characterized for later. That is not true. That is an absolute lie. Um, you know, you can look up the dates for yourself. He, he begins it in 1971. He doesn't win the, the Mr. Universe, the Mr. America that he's known for until 1978. So, um, you know, there's seven years difference between there. So that's quite a long time to have continued uh, training on the high intensity, low volume training method that he's known for. So um, that's just a few questions related to that. Another one that I see people bring up a lot is your CNS, your central nervous system, that this style of training will burn out your central nervous system. Um, so we have two, you know, two primary systems that get utilized for training and there's the central nervous system and you know, we have a variety of different ways of um, measuring the nervous system, um, the autonom autonomic nervous system. I Don't quote me on these things. I'm not like an expert on this, but um, what I will say, however, is that related to training, um, I have learned a few things. And number one is that I personally, my central nervous system, I mean, you can feel like when you start to get that heavy fatigue, heavy, like worn down feeling, I get that far more from high volume training than I do from high intensity training. So with high intensity training, I'm training about two days per week to two very high intensities. Um, and that's something to consider is that, you know, when I first started training, I wasn't able to push my body to high intensities because I didn't know how yet. It took four or five, six years of training before I really was actually able to do that. And then two, um, I can't do that on every lift equally. So on squats, because I was a weightlifter and because I squatted very frequently and to a lot of, um, you know, high intensities, I now am able to actually push my body higher in the squats than I am in other lifts. So when I go and do like, say leg extensions, I actually can't push my body to the same degree because I, I don't know how yet. I've, I've been getting better over these past months as I started doing leg extensions, but uh, that's just one example. But so on a lift per, by lift basis, not all lifts are able to be pushed equally because your body hasn't learned to do that yet. And then two, um, just physically over time, you actually are become more capable of pushing your body to higher degrees. So a lot of people would begin like high intensity training early on and either they're using lifts that they're not accustomed to or they're using lifts that uh, they have or they haven't been lifting that long to to push their body to high intensities or to to um, very you know far extremes in training. And that can look different for different people. So I, I know, um, what's the guy, like Quadzilla? Um, I can't remember, I'm drawing a blank on his name. When I turn on this camera and start filming videos, um, it, it does start to actually get a little bit difficult because I can't remember normal things that, uh, that I would bring up. Um, so normally I would know this guy's name. Um, he lost to Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think, in one of the Mr. Universe competitions, um, or Mr. Uh, the Olympia. I, I, again, I'm not like a bodybuilder, so I don't remember the names of all these competitions and things. Um, but anyways, the blonde guy with the, the big, big, big quads. Um, a lot of you probably will know his name right off. If I were watching this video, I probably would be like, oh, that's, you know, I can't remember his name now though. But since I'm filming it, it gets, you know, the pressure's on a little bit. So I start to forget names. But uh, he, I know he did a lot of high intensity training, but he would do like these leg extensions and go way beyond failure. And I, the only thing I don't care for about that for using myself is that I don't know how to measure it. There's, when you start doing those like very far partial reps, it starts to get like difficult. The one thing that I, I can say is that when I do like a overhead press, I start with like really strict overhead pressing. And then as I do it more and more, um, 
you know, I eventually wear out and I start to actually fail reps. And then I can start doing push presses and, uh, you know, that's a way of pushing it. But I only count the, the good reps that I did. I only count those initial um, overhead pressing. And so if I'm wanting to push myself beyond failure to, to do more work than what I could have done just on the overhead press without adding in the push presses afterwards, then I, you know, I, I only count those first overhead, strict overhead pressing reps. And the goal is then always to increase that, to get better and better and better. But currently um, my, my training process is that I, I train two days per week. Uh, currently that's Monday and Thursday. I do a lower body workout on Monday and I have two different ones that I do. And then I have an upper body workout on Thursday, which also I have two workouts that I do. And I am still making progress on that. So um, I recently switched to using a belt with knee sleeves again, which I hadn't done for quite a long time in the squat. So I'm measuring that and seeing how that progresses. It's not that great now. Um, now one, I have lost 20 pounds. Um, it, over the course of in the past 10 months uh, doing this training program. So you would expect like my numbers might go down some or it might be difficult to make a lot of progress because I have lost quite a bit of weight. Um, in fact, I think 20 pounds might be conservative. I think I actually lost a little bit more than that, but about 20 pounds. I went from approximately, I think I was like 247, 248 down to around 226 right now. So about 20 pounds. Um, so uh, along with that though, like my num I started doing what's called the super squat machine. Um, it, usually people use it for uh, leg press. It has two bars that come out and sits on your shoulder. And then usually people will just stand on the end of it and do uh, calf raises. And that's almost all I've ever seen anybody use it for. But once I started to like, look up the machine, it's called the super squat. So like I, I started messing with the settings and got it. So I could squat all the way down to the bottom of my squat and then come back up. I did that for quite a long time as my primary squat method. Um, it, I use it like, I measure it like a barbell. Like I pretend as if like the, the apparatus, the machine itself was 45 pounds, like a barbell. I think it's a bit more. Uh, I think the one at my gym tells you on the side, it's actually like 65 or 70 pounds, something in that range. But still yet, yeah, just for the sake of my mental um, consistency, I use I treat it as if it were a 45 pound barbell. Uh, so when I load plates on it to add weight, I, I do it like that. So, um, you know, the way that I measure it as if it were a 45 pound barbell, I think I took my squat from about 275 pounds for a max set of 10 um, up to, I think the last thing I did was like 365 for about 10 reps, I guess. And uh, so that's been a little while ago. Several months ago, I started to think maybe I'm missing out on gains by not doing uh, more of the high volume style training. And so I was listening to a lot of Mike, uh, Mike Israetel and uh, the guys from Renaissance Periodization talk about, you know, you, they, you know, you could do so many things like the Brad Schoenfelds of the world and talk about volume and aspects like that. So I thought, well, why don't I try and do an experiment where I take myself doing around 15 to 20 sets per week for a while and see how much progress I make doing that. And um, one, I didn't, I, re I maintained my strength about the same. I stopped um, cutting, so I remained around the same weight and I, but I didn't like start progressing. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a negative for me personally on that one. And by the end of it, I started to feel very fatigued. My central nervous system uh, felt like it was getting heavily overworked. I had a hard time keeping up with that degree of workload. And um, yeah, I just couldn't keep up with that. So um, at least for me on all accounts, those arguments about central nervous system fatigue being greater on high intensity training, that is the worst argument that I've heard because it's, it's exactly the opposite for me. Like my central nervous system um, on doing high intensity training is able to recover and able to keep up with that. And, and I just think it, it boils down to people, they, they want to believe that doing a high intensity training uh, fatigues your central nervous system, but doing high volume training doesn't. Uh, that is not true. That is, that is ignorant. That is uh, short-sighted. Um, so no, don't be, I mean, I'm not saying that people who say that don't know what they're talking about in other areas, but at least in that one isolated area, I don't think they've followed it through very well because there are people out in the world who have a lot of knowledge and have 
uh, trained a lot of people and who have gotten great results, but they have a very narrow-minded way of looking at it. And people that advocate for high-intensity training can be like that too. Uh, they want to say that this is the only way to train and that if you don't do this, you'll never meet, uh, you'll never make your eventual potential. And maybe to some degree, there may be some truth to that because I think you do have to learn to push yourself to high intensities, but I, I don't know that this is like the only way to train. So I just kind of gave a scenario that I tried where I was doing like 15 to 20 sets per week uh, for an extended period of time. I had a very difficult time with that. I was not able to keep up with that. I did not get any results on that either. So my numbers didn't go down, but they kind of stagnated and remained about the same. Uh, so I took a rest period and have recently returned to high intensity training, which is why I've chosen a couple different lifts. Um, I'm going to stick with that for an extended period of time, um, at least until I go to Greece. So I'm going to, to Mount Athos in Greece in late September. Um, so currently it is early August. I'll get approximately six weeks of training. And um, if things are going well, then I will return to high intensity training when I get back from Greece. I'll be gone for about two weeks. I'll be done a um, uh, it's not like a mission trip. Um, if anything, the monks will probably be uh, teaching me a lot um, while I'm on Mount Athos in Greece. But uh, the main part of it is that we'll be working on the monasteries. We'll be clearing paths between the monasteries. So I, I will be doing like manual labor uh, while I'm there. Um, I'll get to see London because we, we stop in London for two days, uh, one day at the beginning of the trip and one day at the end of the trip. I've, I've always wanted to go uh, visit England. I, I wish I was visiting other places than London, but, um, you know, London's great. It's one of the major cities of the world, but, um, you know, I, I would want to go. My, my family name, the Morgan name, comes from Wales, and um, I, I'm used to the hills of Kentucky and the, the countryside there. I think I would like seeing the Welsh countryside and seeing what the small villages and communities are like there. Um, I'm like 50% Scottish, like 10% Irish. So like, I, I would like to see those places and see what that's like. Um, but then England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland are all um, places where I have, you know, that's where like my family largely uh, came from. So I, I've always kind of wanted to see those areas. Unfortunately, I won't get to do a whole lot of that. I'll just get to see London, but maybe one day I'll go back. Anyway, so I'm gonna have a two week break in the middle there. And when I get back, if things are, if I'm not making quite the progress that I would like to do, um, on high intensity training, my next goal will be to try to work in the six to 12 uh, set range per week and see how I go there, pushing myself not to maximum intensity, but to, you know, within the two or three sets short of failure. So, um, you know, I, I won't be going to failure. Then I'll be doing say three to four sets per workout of a given muscle group. Um, I'll probably be working out more frequently instead of only working out twice per week. I'll be working out four days per week. And uh, that will be my next thing. I'll see if doing some very moderate amount of volume where I'm, you know, some muscle group like the hamstrings that seems to have a difficult time taking high volumes. I'll be doing, you know, around six sets per week. Whereas a lot of my muscle groups like quads, uh, chest, back, like those can handle higher volumes of, of workout and or uh, of lifting. Uh, per week, so maybe I'll be going anywhere from eight to 12 sets per week. And then uh, for smaller muscle groups that get a lot of work vicariously through those other lifts, I like the, the biceps, the triceps, um, uh, you know, rear delts, like I, I may only do um, less than six sets because they're already getting a lot of work through those other lifts, but you know, some, some sets on those as well. Um, so that's about it guys. I don't really have a whole lot else right now to say about high intensity training. I haven't made a video in about 10 months on this channel, but that's kind of some updates on how my training has progressed and how, how my uh, results have gotten. Um, I feel differently about um, lifting and displaying my body on camera the way that I have sometimes in the past. Um, I never really did it out of like uh, a desire to show myself off. I just wanted to show the results that I was getting. Um, so I don't think it was entirely unrighteous in the way that I did it. But uh, since becoming an Orthodox Christian and, and um, adopting a lot of the, the principles that are taught by the saints and the church fathers, I do feel differently about um, you know, showing myself off in videos, even if I don't look that great or if I do look that great, e either way. Um, I, I don't probably won't be doing videos where I display my body 
in the same way anymore, but uh, at least I can share my opinion based on the way that my lifts are going and the way that I perceive uh, changes in my body through comparing myself in pictures to old pictures uh, over time. So, you know, that is what it is. Uh, so you guys take it easy and I don't know if I'll make a video anytime super soon, but if I get some really good questions from this, then I might. You guys take it easy. Uh, at least consider that maybe high intensity training uh, may be eventually a good uh, route for some of you to at least experiment with and try. Uh, so you guys take it easy and I'll talk to you maybe in a video coming eventually.